Today I'm going to be talking about anxiety in children. I'm a university professor and a faculty member based at, in education at Western University. So you may be thinking, well, why is she here to talk about anxiety? I'm not a psychiatrist and I'm not a clinical psychologist. I'm a researcher. So what's the association between children, anxiety, and schools? Well, actually, when I say anxiety, many of you are probably thinking very different things. In fact, you and the person next to you in the audience may have two totally different ideas about what anxiety even means. Anxiety is a feeling. It's the fear of the unknown. It's perceiving something as a threat which is going to activate that fight or flight response to get your muscles going and run out of the room. Let's say, for example, right now that we were to get up and to go into the lobby of the auditorium and we were to see a snake. The first thing that you might do is freeze and then you're probably going to have your heart rate increase. And if you really don't like snakes, your palms are going to start sweating and you're going to run out of the room. So that's that fight or flight response. However, anxiety is very complex. Not everyone would react the same way to seeing a snake or to seeing an image of a snake. Especially for individuals who have a diagnosed anxiety disorder, like post-traumatic stress disorder seen in soldiers, or panic disorder, or social anxiety disorder, they could have a much more heightened response to the same image. I bet with all this discussion, though, about anxiety and anxiety disorders, probably not many of you thought about children. However, anxiety is very common in children. It depends where the research is done and the statistics can vary, but about one in eight children, or 12% of the general child population, can be experiencing anxiety. And in teenagers, it's as many as one in four, 25%. So anxiety can be seen in very young children, in teenagers, young adults, and this can have long-term impacts, not only in terms of how they do at school, but taking on new challenges, going to university, taking on a stressful job. What about in the general adult population? Well, the numbers are about 20 to 30 percent. And what's more, many adults may not even know that they have anxiety. They may think it's just a part of their personality. They could think that it's an illness or just a feeling that's elevated in themselves more than others. So some of this information today about anxiety may be coming as a surprise. I know it was to me. In fact, I didn't know that much about anxiety in children until I became a faculty member at Western University. And here is a picture of our child and youth development clinic in which we offer services to children and families in the community. And when I first joined Western, I sat down with the clinic director and I asked him, what was the main reason that children were coming to the clinic? What type of services were they seeking? And what he said surprised me. He said the number one reason that children were coming to the clinic was for treatments and therapies for anxiety, particularly school-based anxiety. So this was news to me. I'm a neuroscientist and I studied child health almost my entire adult life, but anxiety is something in children that we often overlook in our research studies. So why is anxiety being overlooked in children? Well, just like in adults, many children don't know that they have anxiety, but there are signs and symptoms that parents and caregivers can look for in their children. For, have, for example, having physical signs like a stomach ache or emotional changes like crying and irritability or even behavioral changes like showing aggression. And recognizing these signs can be some of the first steps to getting help. What about treatments available for childhood anxiety? Well, at our clinic, our, we focus on psychology-based therapies, such as cognitive behavior therapy. And using this method, this allows children to recognize their thoughts and feelings in an anxiety-promoting uh, situation and learns how to manage their behaviors.
Some children can also benefit from anxiety medication, or others can benefit from meditation or other types of stress-relieving techniques. However, not all children can benefit from these therapies. And no one knows why, why some therapies will work in some children and not others. In particular, children with autism may be significantly impacted by anxiety and also find have few treatment options. At the beginning of my talk, I mentioned that about 12% of the general child population can be impacted by anxiety. But in children with autism, this is 85%, with almost 40% having a diagnosed anxiety disorder. So we're talking about a lot of children in our society, given that about 2% of the general child population has an a diagnosis of autism, or about one in 50 children. So if 85% are experiencing anxiety, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of children that are dealing with this unpleasant feeling on a daily basis. Children with autism who have severe anxiety, this can impact every area of their life, not only in terms of how they do at school, but making friends, sleep, concentrating on tasks, and can, they can also have symptoms like restlessness and fear. For many children with autism who can struggle with, with communication or recognizing emotions in themselves or others, this can be more difficult to recognize anxiety in these children. So there may be even more children with, who have autism who also have anxiety but are going undiagnosed. So why do so many children with autism have anxiety? Well, research has shown that there might be specific types of anxiety in children with autism. So for instance, some children with autism can struggle with social communication, such as difficulties with eye contact. And in social situations, when we're very anxious, this can even heighten anxiety in a negative cycle, making the anxiety much worse. So it may be that anxiety looks very different in children with autism, so they may, need, they may need more tailored treatments. Our group and others are studying why children with autism may have heightened levels of anxiety, and our research showed that these children may be more likely to show depression and have challenging relationships with peers, indicating that depression and peer problems could be key indicators and a clue to anxiety in children with autism. Our group and others are also doing brain imaging studies in order to look inside the brain to better understand the brain regions involved in anxiety. And this is an image of our scanning center at the university. And what you're seeing here is an MRI scanner or magnetic resonance imaging. And you can see there's a little boy inside who's having a scan. And by using this technology, we can study the brain's gray matter and white matter. And children can also perform tasks or games inside the scanner. And that allows us to study brain function. And overall, this technology allows us to study the function and the structure changes associated with anxiety in children with and without autism. And what our research is pointing to is a key brain region involved in fear processing, known as the amygdala, represented here in this glass brain by the red circle. And the amygdala, it's an almond-shaped structure in the brain, and very tiny, but responsible for activating that fight-or-flight response. So going back to the example of seeing the snake, that information is going to go to your eyes, to your brain, and then activate the amygdala. And that's the part of our brain that is going to be signaling our brainstem to dilate our pupils, increase our heart rate, and activate the, those muscles to run out of the room, as well as activating stress hormone to be released. And the, we see that this brain structure is different in children with autism who are experiencing anxiety. So the, the thinking is, is that we can use this technology to look inside the brain and to identify the regions involved in anxiety so that we could better test who is to, going to respond to which therapy. We know that many children with autism are struggling with anxiety and may have difficulty expressing it. So with imaging, this allows us to look inside the brain and relate it to anxiety behaviors.
What we're also learning in our lab is that we, it shows to children, their parents, and individuals working in mental health that anxiety is real, it's associated with changes in the brain, and while complex, imaging may be able to pave the way for new treatments and therapies. So what are the types of treatments that are available for anxiety in children with autism? Well, the treatments, they may have to be tailored based on individual needs and strengths, like the psychology-based therapies or medication or a combination of both, as well as having structured routines and schedules can help to minimize anxiety, and these can be supported by social stories and visual supports that can help children with autism manage and understand anxiety-provoking situations. These therapies and techniques, they can have the potential to have a significant impact on a child's daily life, not only in terms of how they do at school, but also interacting with friends and can help to, help to promote optimal health throughout the lifespan. Thank you.